Well, let's see what they ate. Here's the uh, the new stuff I bailed, December 16th and 17th. And here's a here's what's left from a bail. Uh, left like the Queen Anne's lace behind. You see, they actually ate a lot of crap out of it. They really did. They left this. I mean, they could. I guess if you pushed them, you could make them go on this. There's some grass blades in there, but they're not acting like they're hungry. They're not rushing over here. That old cow's good, by the way. She she was alive today when I got here. Filled up her water bucket. Still waiting for the vets to show up. I kind of wonder if I got some white muscle disease. I had an old Hereford years ago. Every few months, I'd give him a shot of selenium fix her right up and I know that doesn't make a lot of sense because usually that's a dairy cattle but yeah the way she's acting lame on both hinds now not just one leg although she could have compensatory lameness after being lame on and off on that leg but here's the sorghum we did I, Joe and I did Joe Andy and I did this this summer well this fall stuff that was should have you know been harvested months earlier uh, we did it as baleage and yeah they're just like I thought they're leaving the stems behind but the leaves boy they attack the leaves uh, but boy there's a lot of unusable stems just like corn stalks gave them two bales two days ago and some bales got a lot less stem to them and a lot more leaf so yeah, and this is mixed in here with that stuff I just bailed. <sighs> Crap, so... I don't know. Hey, they're not running over here. Nobody must be hungry, I guess. Yeah, I'm glad that old cow, old cow's okay. Boy, that was horrible to see her like that. Horrible. Good way to beat the living hell out of your bale feeders, right? So, I move them a little bit. Um lift them up a little they don't get down in the mud so much and what I'll do is I will come out every once in a while at this this location and push all that manure up in piles and start getting it to compost and then I'll start hauling it out here trying to get it to fields all right got somebody coming so I got a couple customers I just wonder, will they still eat that stalk? I don't know, ain't no leaf there, but of course they ain't gonna keep weight on it. So now let's see what happens to give them the sorghum bales. That sorghum, boy, that got a sweet smell, that fermented smell. There's my December junk hay. So yeah, there's the sorghum silage bales. Got pretty damn good, it's got a lot of a lot of green on it. A lot of green. And I think that green should be real beneficial. Well, I was wondering if they would smell it and come running right over here. This would be the fourth, third bale they've gotten. And they usually, they say they've attacked it. Got the second sorghum silage bale, and you can see this cow munching away on this old December hay, taking mouthfuls. Getting a lot of utilization really out of that bale. And that to me is, makes it worth it doing, you know. The calves are in there digging it up, eating it up too. And this this really, man, this this is how you I think 
So what keeps me afloat is getting hay like this for the cows, you know, because I always thought cows, that's what they should really, beef cows should be living on crap like that. So I've always been against doing baleage. I just thought, because I just think it's just too damn expensive to do. But I don't know, got to relook at all that after this year. I ended up doing baleage out of necessity. Um, I didn't actually know it was as simple to do as it was, as it is. Ends up it isn't that bad to do. And, you know, I guess you, I, a lot of people are doing it, so what do I know? So if you get a higher quality forage, you get better weight gain, better feed efficiency, well, I guess you're going to make a lot more money on that stuff than probably that stuff. But... Um, you can see the bale doesn't look bad. What you see at the, you know, when I showed you the empty round bale feeder is everything after they high graded that bale. Boy, they sure love this sort. Yeah, I'm hooking up. I'm gonna go down the road and grab some of them round bales I baled the other day. But uh, this group, the way they're staring at me, I think they got most of that bale uh, ate up good. So I am making them clean up the silage bale, the alfalfa. I'm not giving them dry hay, and I'm gonna make them clean that up a lot better. I communicated with a lot of you on uh, online. I just said feed them, you know, they feed baleage, no problem, straight baleage. And sometimes you gotta really make them clean it up to finish it. So they seem to get the hang of it. So maybe I'll uh, feed them an alfalfa bale here later on. Boy, did I bale hay in the nick of time or what? Look that red tail hawk up here. It's always a red tail hawk at this field hunting. Now, I was watching that bird trying to hunt the day that um, I was out here baling with those 40, 45 mile an hour gusts. And I was like, good luck trying to hunt in this weather. So what my buddy told me, who I bailed this stuff with, is his cows are cleaning up a lot of the stalk. He goes, you might, you probably got to make them clean it up. And because all the bales really look about the same. And I think that's what I got to do then. Because I was like, holy cow, they're, you know, going through this pretty fast. But he said, make them clean up the stems. His are cleaning it almost all up, leaving a few real thick things behind, um, which is good news. I mean, this stuff is way over mature. That's why there's such big stems. So, all right, that, but yeah, you can see they tear it apart quick and they really start high grading it, get those leaves first. That might, that explains why they weren't super hungry when uh, they came up to me today. You know, when I brought the hay out, makes sense. Yeah, I guess, got a few over there that kind of prefer the, the grass bale, the old December 16th first cutting grass bale.